Now isn't it odd that we spend countless hours training to make ourselves faster, yet we can be crippled and brought to a halt by some pain or discomfort in our feet. And I imagine most of you out there have experienced a blister or some sort of foot pain before. And yeah, it's incredible how much they can hurt. So today I thought I'd run through a number of ways in which you can look after your feet for running. Okay, so injuries aside, what are the common issues that you might experience with your feet when running? Well, we've got blisters, aching feet, swelling feet, hot spots, cracking, peeling, itching, sore toes, even lost toenails. And embarrassingly, I've experienced all of these except losing my toenails. So I've got a fair bit of experience in this department, particularly with blisters. In fact, I'd go as far as saying I've actually refined the art of dealing with blisters and kind of preventing them as well in some cases. In fact, if you want some proof in this, I just recently ran 100K in one go and didn't get a single blister. If that's not proof, I don't know what is. So let's start off now by looking at your shoe choice. Well, this may sound obvious, but it is amazing how often that this key point in foot care for running is overlooked. Now, obviously this is a very nice looking shoe, but it doesn't simply come down to picking a shoe that is a nice color, a nice shape, a nice design. It means getting a shoe that suits your gait. In other words, how your foot lands and moves through the running action. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to go breaking the bank and buying the best shoe out there, but equally, I would really advise not getting the cheapest shoe out there because that is normally reflected in the quality and the feel of the shoe. Which leads me on to the fit of a shoe. Well, this is an area that causes a lot of head scratching because do you go for a size that fits perfectly or perhaps do you go up half a size so that you've got a little bit of wiggle room? Well, if the shoe is too short and too tight, this could lead to discomfort, sore toes, black toenails, maybe even the dreaded lost toenail. But at the same time, if you go for something with too much wiggle room and too much space towards the front, your feet could be moving around within the shoe that could lead to friction and therefore blisters and other issues. And whilst it's probably really unlikely if you've got really improper and badly fitting shoes, then that could lead to calluses, maybe even ankle sprains because you're just not running correctly or other injuries such as around the knee. Now, personally, when I'm getting a pair of shoes, I'm always looking out for something that fits my feet snugly, holds them securely, whilst having a bit of wiggle room towards the front. That means that my toes aren't jutted right up against the front of the shoe. So when I run downhill, I'm not hitting my toes against the front and therefore getting sore toes. At the same time also, I'm, I don't want my toes crushed together so they're overlapping and friction between the toes. I'm also looking out for any pressure points in the shoes because if you can feel anything walking around in them, I mean, imagine what that's gonna feel like after five, 10 or 20 kilometers of running. Well, now moving on to an area that is very often forgotten and overlooked and this is actually what you do and what you wear post run. And I actually have a bit of a routine here that I hadn't really realized I was doing until I gave it some thought with this video. So after any long run or any sort of substantial run, I actually kind of let my feet breathe a bit. So I refrain where possible from putting socks on or any shoes on, and I guess just let the feet relax. I'm not really sure why, but I guess it also allows them to dry out. It can then reduce the risk of any fungal or athlete's foot issues. And also what you actually wear on your feet before, after, and around your running is really important too. So don't go squeezing your foot into really tight fitting shoes because you do want the feet to relax a bit. Equally, don't start walking around for hours in some really badly supported shoes or some high heels or flip flops or something like that because rather than your feet relaxing and recovering, they're then gonna be working over time. And now moving on to your sock choice. Now simply put, make sure that you're wearing a decent sock for running in and that it's put on and fitting correctly because a rooked up sock or a badly placed seam can cause absolute havoc, but also 
don't wear a sock like this, a casual cotton sock for instance, because they're just not breathable, they're not really designed for sports, so your feet are gonna end up getting quite hot, quite sweaty and damp, and that can lead to them getting swollen and maybe even blisters. So instead, try and get yourself some specific sports or running socks. These are made from a material that's more breathable, often even moisture wicking, and then even in some, as these have here, actually got padded areas around those that take more pressure when you're running. And then also moving on to something that's probably easier said than done, but try to keep your feet dry where possible. Well, wet feet and wet socks can not only increase your chances of fungal or athlete's foot issues, but also friction, rubbing, and blisters. Now, I appreciate you can't go avoiding the rain, but if there's any big puddles or streams that you can avoid running through, I really would advise it. Now also, you might just want to go prepped anyway by lubricating your feet and applying something like a Vaseline or an anti-chafe balm. Well, this is actually something I do prior to most of my long runs, actually. So I'll apply a little bit of Vaseline in between my toes, along my arch, and sometimes even on my heel. And that's just to provide an extra layer, and I guess almost glide between my sock and my skin. But the big question, though, is if you do get a blister, what do you do? Pop or not? And it's a big debate. Now, any healthcare professional will probably tell you to not pop it, and actually part an extra layer or padding onto it just to relieve the pressure if you're going to walk around or run on it. Personally though, that has never worked for me. In fact, it's often made it worse. It's spread the blister and made it more painful. So I've always popped mine. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, and I'm not telling you to do the same, but I've always used a sterilized pin and then I've cleaned it out, then allowed it to dry out naturally. And then actually, if I am going to go and run on it, I'll then use a pad, a gauze, a swab or some sort just to go over it to relieve that pressure and then use some tape to hold that on. Like I said, that's just what I do. It's worked well for me and I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. And finally, moving on to an odd subject, but your toenails. Sorry, I know this isn't the most glamorous of topics, but it is an essential one. You really, really do want to keep on top of your nails, particularly so again, if you're going to be running hard, fast, or doing a long run, because any long nails could end up sticking into some of the other toes, causing quite painful cuts or blisters, or jutting into the front of your shoes and causing those black toenails, or maybe even lost toenails. Well, I think that is everything about caring for your feet when running. You could take it a step further and really pamper your feet from time to time. Maybe just rub some moisturizer into them, massage them, and that might prevent them from drying out, becoming cracked, or even peeling. If you've got any questions, please, as always, drop them in the comment section below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget you can follow GTN over on our social media and subscribe to us on YouTube.